give a quick introduction, I'm joined here today by James Jagger, who's one of the stars of, and Alex Neuer, who is the writer and director of Sound of Violence, which has had its premiere at South by Southwest this week. Thank you so much for joining me, guys. Thanks for having us. So I guess to, to dive right in, my first question um, is for Alex, which is, Alex, if you could tell us a little bit about the concept, how you how you came up with, with this particular idea and what sort of influences uh, impacted your work. It's a sort of um, a weird offspring of uh, a music documentary I produced um, called 808, which is uh, about the 808 drum machine. And that came out at, at South by in 2015, actually. And, um, and then Apple Music in 2016. Overall, it took five years of my life, very, very drum machine obsessed, um, amazing people involved. You know, I got to talk to the Beastie Boys, to Pharrell Williams, to Questlove. It was incredible. It's also one of the big reasons why I moved to the, the States. So when I was done with that, I, I felt that it was time for me to move on from documentaries for a bit. And, um, and my wife pushed me to get into my uh, beloved uh, genre of horror. And uh, as I was starting to write and write project, I was encouraged to switch to from producer to director. Um, and as I was developing a project, um, I had a light bulb moment of um, uh, of kind of of closure on my drum machine obsession by the idea of killing somebody with a drum machine. And um, and that's where the idea of the short came about. And um, and from there. Um, Things started to happen quite quickly. Uh, I met uh, my producing partner Hanu Aokia, who you know liked the idea, and we put the short together. We shot it in in uh, March 2018, and um, and uh, it toured a bunch of festivals, and and you know did qu quite well. And I was very surprised because it was kind of very cathartic for me, but at the same time it was more like you know it was a very sort of out there concept because music driven horror is in that way was was not really. A thing. Um, so, but uh, the feedback I was getting as well was uh, about the character of Alexis, and you know, I was very obsessed with her. Um, you know, after having written her into this very crazy uh, horror dynamic, I, I I felt there was something more to it because she was an artist rather than a killer, and there was a, you know, and that's why the name conductor was you know very uh, fit for 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 the short. And then when we, when, uh, and so with all this feedback, I started to really realize that there was so much more to her. And I started to write the, her backstory, uh, possibly as a second short. And then I realized th that I started to have ideas about her journey going forward as well and expanding on her universe. So that's where the, the script kind of organically came out of me. And, um, and, you know, I, I, I grew up surrounded by artists as well. So, you know, really focusing on the artist journey was uh, was really motivating me and um, and I felt yeah I it's it, it's surprisingly it's, it came together surprisingly fast and because um, you know we, we I started I did the first draft in January 2019 and uh, by the time I was in Cannes in 2019 I had already a third of the finance raised and and I had a horror version of the script and with already the intent of switching it to a thriller Anyway, it moved very quickly, and and I kind of went along with uh, with the motivation, and then I I met Jasmine, and um, and she answered uh, all the parts of the character that I had left open, and and um, and I felt I had met Alexis, and and uh, and then you know, Lily and James also came on board, and I was like, this is this is coming along too well <laughs> and so so you know it just uh, it's uh it's uh no very exciting as well and and then premiering it at south by like you know like where i premiered 808 it was kind of a you know a, a nice full of, circle yeah yeah went full circle it, it's no i uh, i'm very lucky very grateful and um yeah and i'm having a great time <laughs> i i think the film turned out extremely well james what what drew you to the project uh, how did you become involved was it the script was it alex it was a couple of things really actually um i think the script really interested me i was kind of taken back by the some of the scenes in the script i think when i when i was flicking through it i had to sort of double back and read over some of the previous pages be like did i just read that correctly <laughs> and and i was i was curious how you know i've been a musician and i was just kind of curious how he was going to bring all these grisly kind of 
visions to life and that it was really that and and also um the opportunity to work with jasmine who i was a fan of actually and um i'd seen her in in uh, in the leftovers and i was was just curious to um to see how this was all going to hash out and i love uh i love running and gunning and shooting films as quickly as possible you know screw nine months if you can get it done in two weeks you know that's that's my attitude <laughs> Well, no, like you, I, I, I love The Leftovers as well, one of the best shows of the last, the last 15, 20 years. Uh, what, what sort of research went into, and I, I wasn't really familiar with the concept, but of synesthesia um, that sort of informs how, how she's able to experience the world? So one of the key points in developing the script was to um, really address her motivation and her creative drive and the creative high. Um, and because in the short it was we were not addressing any of it because it's six minutes and it's really meant to be an, an impactful you don't really have time to overthink it or de definitely not to explain it so when we when we developed the character when i developed the the sort of storyline i remember uh, having this discussion with hanu about her motivation and uh, and we started to talk about synesthesia and and i went to do research and i found painters and musicians and, and all sorts of, of, um, of people with synesthetic abilities um, and experiencing sound or certain words or certain things in, in, in this extra dimension. And I just found it fascinating because it would allow us to create almost a palpable um, experience of the creative high that Alexis goes through um, in those gruesome experiments. So, um, so then we uh, we push the envelope visually to kind of deliver that. And, and this is where uh, working with Daphne, our wonderful DP was so important because she had great experience working with uh, lights and setting lights into, uh, into scenes, not just, not, sorry, lights and colors into scenes so that not just your expected, um, you know, spotlight or anything. It was just like more like, oh, all of a sudden there's a, there's a green corner and, a, you know, all that to, so I, I felt that she was really the right person to come in and, and experiment with the visual look because we had to make sure that the synesthesia was not just a, a layer in front. It needed to be really all the way back. So there was what we did on set with experiment with lighting and movement. And then so that then when, when we overlaid the synesthesia, we could create something that really felt um, that it, it kind of encompassed Alexis and cut her a little bit from the world while she was experimenting, which was important to then keep the audience as well with her um, because they're, they're experiencing visually or seeing visually the, the creative high. And, and, and I think it's a, it's a good reminder that she's not a cold-blooded killer. She's, she's an artist and she, um, the, the collateral damage of her work are, are, are not what she focuses on. You know, she never even looks at her victims really. Yeah. Uh, James, I, I've, appreciated your work in vinyl and the outpost but i was curious how you came to approach horror this time i think it's one of the first uh one of the first horror roles you've had and if it changed your approach as an actor what it was like to it, sort of engage on a more physical level well no definitely it was a it was a different project from from the last few that i'd done but uh my first uh first film that i ever did was a student horror so i kind of started out doing some uh and worked on a on a bbc uh television production of a Tony Tony Higgins production who's a you know classic horror director so I've definitely I've definitely been done some horror but um it's not something it's weird it's not something that I think of as something separate and like something that I have a different approach to you know and um I I don't even like it to be called like genre you know movies i think it's, it's 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 a movie on its own right and i think anytime i approach any job i have the same kind of toolbox that i use to approach it i don't think all oh, right this is action i'm going to hit the gym like i'm going to start like getting juice this is horror i'm going to start like reading poe you know it's it's just like you have this i have the same toolbox basically which is to try and you know get inside of the character trying to find some sympathies and some similarities and some some aspects of it that i can kind of explore and go down but for sure i remember thinking when I was reading this I was like oh man things are gonna get it's gonna get things are gonna get rough <laughs> this day <laughs> or like it's gonna be a little uh, this day's gonna get a little ugly you know and um uh, you know I'm squeamish as the next person and that 
you know, without, uh, there's been, there were some scenes we shot that were, were, were genuinely harrowing. Well, James, I was actually, I was going to ask what, and, and a spoiler warning, but I was going to ask you about uh, sort of your, your final scene in the film and what it was like to film that. It was, it, it was a really incredible experience actually. And um, it was something that took, it took a lot of, it's, it, it's a, it's a, it looks like a very violent kind of, uh, unchoreographed thing but of course we're in a very enclosed environment and the camera's right there and you're not free to express yourself fully as like a raging human about to die so you do have some constraints to, to act within but um Alex did such a fantastic job about making it about the moments and making these really important moments within that uh struggle that were really had to be highlighted and captivated and uh no, no spoiler alert, but you know, he was very adamant that the knife, there was some specifics about the way the knife went and uh, here and there. And um, it, yeah, it was, it was fun. I tell you what, it's fun. It's, it's, it's definitely, uh, it's definitely different from something like, you know, acting like a jarhead in, in an army movie. So it was, it was fun to express that, that level of violence and that kind of level of, uh, you know, you're like a, it's like being a kind of stuck pig, basically, when you're in that kind of experience. <laughs> it's not something I've ever really gone through where you really know your end is there and you can really like let it rip. And that was kind of a fun experience to see. Hey, what does my voice make when I think I'm about to die? Like, what does my body make? Like, <laughs> I don't know, you know, it's a kind of an exploratory experience for me. So it was definitely a lot of fun. And um, Daphne, our DP, was fantastic, at, you know, capturing it without braining anyone on the head with a huge... James <laughs> <laughs> was such a good sport. He's, he's saying he's squeamish and a bit of a wuss, but that's, that's a lie. He, those scenes really took everybody to come together and you know this is this is not just you know directing and say you do that you do that we had to really coordinate and um his own experience uh in past project came through and we had long discussion about you know moments that that, that he can that where he could as well uh, recommend ways that he prefers and everything so that we could create something where where um we were really all in sync and um, and that's why you know it just like this is what's fun about working with somebody like James um, and the rest of the cast is when they when they really put themselves as like okay but you know let's this build this character together and everything from the sentences they spoke all the way to those scenes um, was really calibrated to suit them. For example, something silly, but I'm you know I'm I'm French and Finnish, so, so English is technically not my first language, although I've lived in, in English speaking countries for twenty years, and. Um, and so working with James and Jasmine and Lily, um, adapting their lines to be more natural and to really sound like them, to also, um, as they said at the time, to make sure that they also continued that flow without changing anything that was being said, but just the way it, it was, it was, that was a lot of fun. And, and, um, and I really appreciate the, the, the time and commitment from them that they took, you know, they were long days. We had 20 days to shoot this movie. So they were long days and they were, you know, there was a lot going on, but still, you know, they were, they would, you know, message me or email me, or they would speak together at night and just trying to all, uh, all align their, their exchange. And that allowed um, a certain level of ownership in the performance that, that kind of really comes through in key scenes. Um, and, um, and I'm just thinking, for example, as, as the scene uh, in the street uh, between Lily and, and James as a, as a great example of a scene that needed to, really stay with the audience and um and um you know and remind that 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 james uh, that duke is is an unwitting um uh antagonist you know he's not there to to stir shit up he's there he, he, he's just he just kind of unbeknownst to him he came into that try he, he closed out that that love triangle